Welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is a follow-up video to my 5W30 um, oil versus the 0W20 for the 2GRFE. And in that first video, I talked about um, clearances and chain length, oil pump, part numbers, everything that was exactly the same as the later models. So I went from like a 2006 to 7 to 2011 and down to um, up to 2018, I believe, and talked about the similarities and why there was a switch from 0W20 to 0W30 to 5W30. And I just got my oil analysis back um, from my run here with the 530. So I just wanna talk about it and discuss it and take a look at the actual, the wear metals and how we did you know, what did the, what the data actually show us? All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, so what I did is there's a side-by-side -side comparison here. We got 5W30 and 0W20. And if you look at this, right, I ran the 5W30 for 12,000 miles, which is pretty far. And it was a tough run too, because it was through the winter. It, it was not, I, I wouldn't call it ideal driving conditions. The 0W20 right over here was Mobile One's um, extended performance. And I did 10,000 miles on that. And that was ideal, as close to ideal as I could get. I would think it was spring into summer. And I believe I changed it out in, somewhere in the early fall. So it had a little bit easier life than the 5W30. But let's just take a look at some of the numbers here. All right, so on this analysis, we have in the top, the top row here, we have aluminum. So if you compare the two, um, the one on the left is the 530. I have five parts per million of aluminum and three parts per million of aluminum for the 0W20. So I'm slightly higher in aluminum and that's a wear metal. And then if we go down to iron, which would probably be your piston rings, I'm at four parts per million for the 5W30 and five parts per million for the 0W20. So I'm a little bit less on the wing, on the ring wear on that one. Uh, copper, which could be bearings, I have zero on the 5W30 and I have one uh, for the 0W20. And then lead, nothing, and tin, nothing. All right, so that's... um. That's interesting because that is our wear metals. Now, my rule of thumb is when you're talking about wear metals, if you can get one part per million per 1,000 miles, you're doing really good. And if you look at our total wear metals, the aluminum, iron, and copper, they're identical. And we're averaging around one, a half a part per million and this is not under ideal conditions. So with the 5W30, I'm at the same, the same wear numbers, except I drove more and I drove through some difficult weather type of situations. So I think that's, I think that shows that you can definitely use the 5W30 and the 2GRFE. I don't think there's any issue with that. And if we go through the rest of this analysis, we start looking at this. Um, on the left, I used AMSOIL, so the 530 was AMSOIL, and the right was the Mobile One 020. And if you come down here in the, into the section with the Molly, that's an additive. Um, it's an anti-wear additive. Now, AMSOIL loads theirs up. Uh, they get about 192 pots per million. I got 81 out of the Mobile, which is about right for Mobile. That's generally what they put in there. And then if I keep going down here, um, Boron, 60 to 47, similar. Silicone, 10. Silicone for Mobile One, 14. Sodium, I was at nine, and it was equal to nine as well on the Mobile One. And I've already done like a similar video to this, but this was more specific to the 5W30 and not just an extended oil change interval. Uh, calcium is nearly identical. Magnesium. Very similar, it looks like Amsoil throws a little bit more in there. Uh, phosphorus and zinc, pretty similar. Uh, so our additive packages are pretty similar, except for the Molly, where 
the Molly and the AMS oil, they really crank it up. Um, and then of course, you know, AMS oil is a much more expensive oil, but I'm just talking about the weight here, like the 5W30 versus the 0W20. And then if I get into viscosity, I'm right in line where I'm supposed to be for a 5W30, so it didn't drop out of grade, it didn't share. Um, same thing with the 0W20, when I did the 0W20 uh, at 50.6, that's right where it's supposed to be. It did share a little bit. Um, Mobile One, uh, you know, has been known to do that on occasion with certain with with certain oils that they use. Um, their flash point on the 5W30, it came in a touch high, and there's a reason for that. So it had a little bit of fuel in it, and that was because I let the car sit outside for eight hours. I started it up and drove it for about 15 seconds, and then. I changed the oil, so I knew I was gonna get some uh, fuel in there for sure, and I did, just a little bit. And then we go down to the total base number. Um, I got 3.5 for the AMS oil, and 3.9 for the Mobile One. So the Mobile One actually did a little bit better as far as retaining its additives, but we're talking 2,000 miles less of driving. So that that's something there. Uh, insolubles, um, very similar, which is basically nothing. So um, just to reiterate here, I think we're doing fine on the 5W30. I definitely think this is something that you could do, or at least I can do, and I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying that it worked re reasonably well for me, actually very well. So um, yeah, I'm gonna keep running the 530. I might even bump it up to a 030 on a, Europe a European oil. I've, I've had people tell me, hey, Go with the European car formula for Mobile One, the 0W40. It's got a good base stock. It has PAO in it, has some esters. It's high quality for the money. You really can't beat it. But I, I just didn't feel that comfortable putting that into this. But I might. I got to say I might. Um, so that's it. That's my uh, 5W30 journey. I think I've got somewhere around, I don't know, 30, 35,000 miles on 5W30 now and the various oil changes I've, I've done. And I just think it's uh, perfectly fine for a 2GR FE. Um, oh, and the fuel economy. The fuel economy has been the same. So I haven't dropped anything there. I haven't lost any of that. And the reason why I did this to begin with was for um, high temperature, high shear protection. I just wanted a little bit more protection, but I gotta be honest, it, the 0W20 did really well too, I gotta say. I mean, I, I can't say it didn't do well under normal driving conditions. I, I just think that this run that I just went on was a little bit more than normal driving. I did a lot of traffic. I did a lot of higher speeds. I did it in cold weather. I had cold startups. I had short trips. I had all sorts of stuff and it, it did it fine. What, do I think that there's anything wrong with the 020 in this engine? Probably not. Do I think that you can put 530 in this? I definitely do. Do I think that Toyota probably did this to save some fuel economy? I do. Um, but that was my journey. And I think I'm gonna stick, like I said, with either a 530 or a 030 or bump it up to a 040. Uh, but that's the end of this. I won't be talking about these formulas anymore, these weights. Thanks for watching, bye.